On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, we're going to talk about Jeeps, a couple of movies, we're going to talk a little bit about E3, and hopefully we're going to get an on-the-scene report from Amos. Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Kent. This is episode 216, and it is the 13th of June, 2019. Um, like I said before, we might get an appearance from Amos uh, later on in the show, but for right now, you guys are stuck with me. Um, how's everybody doing? Um, man, I've had a I've had a weird couple of weeks, and so... A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned our Jeep Cherokee, and we were having some electrical issues. Well, the good news is that I was able to troubleshoot it correctly down to the the broken wires, and I was able to to repair it. So electrical issues are no more. Um, however, my victory was short-lived because shortly after fixing that, we realized that there's an issue, uh, another issue, where coolant was leaking all over the place. Uh, we were leaving puddles, the car was overheating, it was, um, it wasn't fun. Uh, so, I think we have found the problem now. Uh, it appears that the fluid was leaking out of the thermostat housing. So we took everything apart, uh, got the old gasket out of there, got the got a um, uh, got the thermostat out. We cleaned everything up. Uh, realized I probably need to replace the thermostat and definitely need a new gasket. Uh, so I went to AutoZone to get the parts. That was on Tuesday, and I got everything except for the gasket. I had to order the gasket. So it finally got here today. Uh, if I wasn't doing RMP, I would be in the garage, uh, probably elbow deep in grease. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe I'll maybe I'll have some time before bed tonight to get started on that. But mo most likely, I'm just going to work on it this weekend. So we'll see. Uh, I'll probably have an update next week about the Jeep if it is a fully functioning vehicle or if it's a still a leaky piece of crap. Um, definitely hoping for the former on that one. Uh, Man, I did I did get a chance to see a couple of movies over the last two weeks uh, since we didn't have a show last week. I, I had a movie ready to talk about last week, which was Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Um, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of kaiju movies, uh, so I was super stoked to watch this movie. Um, man, the monster fights were good. I don't know how I feel about the movie overall, though. Uh, I was a little disappointed with the edit of the movie uh, because it very much felt like they didn't want to give away too much at one time because they would have the monsters getting ready to fight, and then they would they would cut out to do this like ten or fifteen minute dialogue session with some human characters. I was like, man. This isn't, no, this isn't what I want. I, I want, I just want to see the monsters fight. So I, I'm kind of 50-50 on this one. I'm not sure if I if I really liked it or if I really didn't like it. Um, there were definitely aspects uh, on both sides of the scale on that. So I kind of want to watch it again. I don't think I'm going to see it in the theater again because there's so many good movies coming out now. Uh, but once it gets on, on Amazon or... Um, you know, or Netflix or something like that. I'm definitely going to watch it at least once more. Um, and hopefully I can uh, just kind of pick out the good parts and pay attention to that. So, um, yeah, so that was Godzilla. The next movie that I watched, uh, that we just watched on Sunday, I think it was, was X-Men Dark Phoenix. Um, I enjoyed it. The way I felt about that movie was... Pretty much how I felt about every X Men movie that I've seen. It's fine. It's decent. Like on on Tom Merritt's scale, I I'm gonna have to agree with him. It was fine. No major flaws. 
it was fun to watch. But it was, you know, it's, you know, it's not like Avengers Endgame. It wasn't just, you know, this this rush of emotions and and oh my god, did you see that? Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of that. Uh, there were some pretty cool fight scenes, um, some pretty decent s- special effects. Uh, the story was all right. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it just wasn't, um, uh, you know, like overwhelmingly great. But I liked it. So, all right. So I'm, I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Um, but you know what? Speaking of movies, let's hear. Let's hear where we are sitting in the movie draft. Welcome to your movie draft minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of June 10th, 2019. I'm your host, Luke Moise J. Brought to you by Constipation. When you just don't give a crap. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Drunk Kids Gaming is in last place with $21.9 million. Team The Vod Squad gets $39 million from Dark Phoenix. And fifth place with $147.9 million. Team Game Net gets fourth place with $179.1 million. Team Retro Misery gets $59 million from The Secret Life of Pets 2. And third place with $403.4 million. Team Avadrink is in second place with $769.1 million. And in first place, it's Team Movie Party with $1,196.1 million. Last your stream team movie draft minute. All totals are accurate as of June 12th, 2019. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Big Voice J, for that update. Uh, so RMP is still in third place, which I think we are... I, co- I think we're going to comfortably remain in that spot if not for the entire draft at least for the time being uh let's see if i can transition this okay so here we go so for the viewers uh here is what the standings look like here is the the summer uh, movie draft sheet so uh let's see let me see if i can drag that out a little bit so we can see the totals here all right so as of right now, RMP is sitting with 412 million, uh, which puts us way, way ahead of third place uh, game night with 180 million. Uh, but we're still quite a bit behind Have a Drink with 769 million dollars. Um, man, so we just had we just had Secret Life of Pets 2 come out. Uh, it's getting us a little bit of money, not a lot. Uh, we're looking at uh, just shy of $64 million on that. Uh, Godzilla has only brought us in $84 million. Uh, quite the disappointment with Godzilla. Uh, hmm. I was really hoping for at least $100 million on that. But, you know, that's okay. Aladdin is making us all the money, $243 million so far. Uh, let's see. What do we have left? We've got Spider-Man Far From Home remaining, and I've been hearing buzz that it's expected to reach $150 million on opening weekend. I really hope that's the case, and I, I think it can do it. It is the next MCU film, so all of the all the, uh, the pieces are in place for that, I think. Uh, but yeah, there's no way anybody is catching Movie Party with Almost one point two billion dollars already, and they've still got movies coming out. Um, yeah, absolutely impossible. All right. Uh, okay. So, what are we going to get into next here? Um. Yeah. So, like I said, Amos is uh, is normally with me, but he's not. He is in Los Angeles right now. Uh, he went to the DTNS meetup. Not only that, he has been working on his internship with Tom Merritt and Jenny Josephson. And he's been doing a lot of uh, really cool podcasting stuff out there and meeting all of our heroes, um, some of which we'd met before, like Tom Merritt, for example. Um, we've, we've met him several times. Um, but a lot of the... A lot of the people in the podcasting realm that we admire, we hadn't met before, but Amos is getting the opportunity right now uh, to meet and even work with a lot of those folks. So 
um, super exciting for him. Um, when we go on trips like that, that are podcast related, we rely at least in part on what we get from our patrons. So if you want to help us continue to expand our podcasting horizons, I encourage you to head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, show that you give a fuck by giving us a buck. Um, we're, and we're not just standing there with our hands out. We like to give things uh, back to the patrons. So we, when we have really cool uh, things going on in our pre-shows and post-shows, especially in our post-shows, uh, a lot of times with, with guests, we go for like another hour and change even and get in, get in some real interesting conversations. In fact, some of the funniest moments on RMP have been in our post-shows. Uh, see any episode that Tay Allen has been on. Um, but yeah, we, we like to provide those to our patrons. Um, also, exclusive interviews like we did a while back with Gloria Young. That is one of our favorite segments that we've ever done. Uh, and that was a patron exclusive. So get in there. You never know what's going to drop into the, the Patreon. Um, I think you'll really like it. Uh, check it out. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. All right, guys. E3 was this week. Lots and lots of announcements. I am not going to run down all of the things that I've seen on Twitter and everywhere else uh, because it's already been covered. Everybody has talked about all of them. I, however, want to talk about an E3 announcement that um, hasn't been making a lot of the press rounds, uh, but something that I have found... Uh, very interesting, personally. So have you guys ever heard of Arcade 1-Up? I'm going to bring this uh, bring this web page up for the viewers. All right, so Arcade 1-Up is a maker of at-home arcade machines. And these are, I believe, three-quarter scale. Uh, you might have seen them in Walmart. Uh, they look really cool, and they're they're very very reasonably priced. Uh, like this Street Fighter Two machine, for example, is only two hundred and fifty bucks, and you get you get three versions of the game, um, you know the three major arcade releases for it, and um, it's awesome. Like they've got all kinds of them. They've got a Mortal Kombat machine. They've got a Space Invaders machine. Pac-Man, Rampage, Galaga, I mean, it's et cetera. And these all come with multiple games in the system. There's, They even have one that's got like 12 games in the one cabinet. Well, they had an announcement at E3 announcing that they are coming out with three new machines uh, that I'm really excited about, one of which is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles machine. Uh, have any of you... Do, do you guys remember, like, from the 90s, the, the Ninja Turtles arcade machine where it's got four players simultaneously? Um, I have very fond childhood memories of that. Uh, the, the game was so much fun. I probably, I probably dumped, I, I don't even know, a couple hundred dollars into that machine. Um, it was so much fun. Uh, but yeah, so this is one that they're that they're bringing out, and it does in fact have the the four controllers for each of the turtles. Um, so I think that is going to be awesome. There's also a Marvel machine that's coming out. It's going to have uh, the uh, Marvel uh, like Avengers fighting game uh, along with X Men and a Punisher title. Um, yeah, so let me let me bring up this article from IGN that's got some some pictures here if I can get if it would stop loading all of the ads. Um, hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'll bring that up here in a second. Okay, so th the machine though that I think I am most excited for is this one right here that I'm about to bring up a Star Wars machine and this is the original uh, three Star Wars games from the arcade this is where you get to fly an X-Wing uh, you've got the the X-Wing actual like controls you know, 
flying around, blowing up TIE fighters, and you eventually get to, to attempt to destroy the Death Star. Uh, they've also got Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi in here. Uh, Return of the Jedi, if I remember right, is is kind of a, a more advanced version of the original Star Wars game uh, where you're flying an X-Wing and, and trying to blow up the second Death Star. Uh, Empire Strikes Back, if I remember correctly, is the one where you're in a snowspeeder, but it's like kind of third-person perspective instead of the in-cockpit view where you're flying around trying to knock down all of the the uh, AT-ATs on Hoth. Um, but yeah, so for the, the video viewers, here's an up-close picture of the controls for the Star Wars machine. Um, I think this one is going to be... Uh, it's either 300 or 350 bucks, I think, when this thing comes out. And I am stoked for it, man. I... I've been thinking about it for a while about picking up one of the machines like a you know like a centipede or or Pac-Man or something like that. But I can't really really the only reason I haven't gotten one is cuz I can't decide which one I want to drop that kind of money into uh, cuz we're looking at like 300 bucks, which is really really good for an arcade machine, but it's still that's, that's still 300 bucks. You know, so I I want to make sure that I get uh, the you know the one that I would enjoy the most uh, because it's not like I've got the room or the money to just you know collect all of them um, that would be awesome to have your own at home just arcade room that would be such a cool thing uh, but since I can't do that I've been I've been waiting to see you know which one I want and now with this announcement I'm even more conflicted <laughs> than than I was uh, because these these do not come out until this fall, I think. So I think I might have to ask Santa Claus to bring me one of these. All right, I am going to play something special for you guys that I have not even had a chance to view myself. If, as soon as I figure out how to make OBS show this to you guys. Um, oops, that's not what I wanted. So let's do, okay, so let's go to, back to our overlay, and let's change this. I know this is really compelling for all of the audio listeners out there. Um, I would say that I will go in and uh, edit this out, but let's be honest, guys, I probably won't. <laughs> all right, um, let me see if I can, uh, what is it called? What is the name of the file? That would help. That would be very helpful. All right. So, one five. Here we go. All right. So let's hope this works. Okay. I think it's working. Yes. All right. Um, hello and welcome to a special Rick and Avery. Kilo episode that is uh, one of the shorter ones if you don't remember because it has been a while. Mm -hmm. um, this is Rich Stoffelino, aka Mr. Anthropology, uh, on the on the Twitters. Anywhere, Rich, yeah. yeah. Anywhere else, uh, Mr. Anthropology? Uh, if you want to try and hack into most uh, accounts, try yeah. Mr. Anthropology and reset my password. Um, don't log into my email, but yeah, pretty much everywhere. I mean, we have a small audience, so I feel pretty safe with you saying that. Uh, if you want to see what I've liked on Reddit. Uh, it's mostly daily tech news show related stuff. So, Mr. Anthropology on Reddit. Fair enough. Um, we are here in uh, DTNS Studios, and we were trying to do a Ritual Misery episode tonight, like a full thing. But Kent's going to handle that because, well, we're we're actually like learning and teaming up with people and doing stuff. It's pretty cool, actually. There should be a montage of what we have done, with set I, to like an '80s power ballad. I have taken some pictures, so I might be able to accumulate all those. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what would you say, because we're, we're both down here to work with Tom and work with Jenny and do some other little things that we haven't been able to do in person and things like that. What would you say has been the most impactful part of this week? Uh, just kind of having that uh, kind of expertise on hand to just kind of bounce weird ideas, do workflow stuff. Like that's mm. the big thing for me right now is like I feel like I have a lot of the separate skills and but like kind of uh, stringing them all together and making them work in unison is very mm. valuable. Mm. And you? Um, I would say 
Honestly, the most valuable part for me has been actually seeing people in person and together mm -hmm. and being able to not just, now I don't know you from Skype, I can actually say I know you in real life. Sure. And you know how uh, I smell. It's disturbing. It, well, it's, I wouldn't say disturbing, mm -hmm. but it's not exactly comforting. Whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually being able to see Jenny in person and meet her in person and be able to hang out with Richard last night and uh, we did, uh, let's talk about Thrones live in person last night with That's all really three cool. of us. with. With this guy doing some production stuff. So blame yeah. me if it sounds bad. Well, yeah. Yeah. They're not going to blame me Certainly. for the bad editing. Clearly. Or lack thereof. Right. Um, so, yeah, we, I just wanted to touch base real quick and uh, say that this is what we're doing. And it's been awesome. It's I've been very thankful for this trip. Absolutely. it's It's been quite great. And now the video is getting shaky because my arm's getting tired. So this sounds like a good point to say peace out. Enjoy. Uh, Enjoy whatever Kent does for you tonight, because Deuces. I'm sure it'll be fun. Yes, indeed. Uh, and I can stop it, right? I guess, I don't know. It's not a picture, it's an actual video? Two, uh, if it's, two it's minutes a very in. long exposure, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was, that was awesome. Uh, thank you, Amos, for, for putting that together for us, and thank you, Rich, for making an appearance. Um, Wabbit Magic asks, is that Tom whistling? I that that'd be a good question for Amos. I don't know if he is going to call in this evening. Uh, that was one of the possibilities that we were talking about last night. Um, I think um, that that may happen at some point. Um Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. And I I wanna I wanna go ahead and try something right now. Um, we can't necessarily get Amos right now, but we may be able to get someone else. So let me give this a shot. Hello? Why, hello there, sir. W welcome to the show, Squid. <laughs> About damn time. Yeah, man. Um, it's been a minute. How you been? Dude, it's been an insane, insane couple of months. I can tell you that. Uh, it looks like you're driving right now. Is that the case? Yeah, I, I, it's how I spend most of my week. Two hours to work and two hours from work. Oh, my God. That is insane, man. I, I've got about a 30-minute one-way commute, and that is... That's about my limit now, I think. I don't, I don't know what I would do with, with two hours. You listen to Tom Merritt and RMP and Night Attack a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. That's that's pretty much what I do on my commute is, is just listen to podcasts. Um, so we were just treated with a video of Amos and Rich Straffolino talking about their experiences in L.A., you're also in L.A. Yes, yes. In fact, uh, I actually, uh, for the last couple of days, I was able to spend some time with Amos, which I was really, really looking forward to. Because um, last time he and I were in the same, like, city and knew about each other was, like, 25 years ago. Yeah. Like, right when he left. So... That was the most surreal moment in my life. I've had some experiences where, like, this is awesome. But that, that moment that you see someone that you've been longing to just be near, your mind just goes pop. Right, right. I was telling you uh, probably about a week ago about my experience when um, – when I retired from the Air Force, I had a, a really good friend uh, that I hadn't seen in years, and I was hoping that he could come to my my retirement ceremony. And he <laughs> he said, you know, I'll I'll be there in spirit, man. Um, I love you, but I just can't make it. And uh, I was kind of disappointed, but I accepted that, right? Because there was a lot of people that weren't able to attend my retirement, so I was like, okay, all right, well, maybe we'll maybe we'll be able to do this another time. Uh, Steph told me that, that um, you know, when it, when it came the day of my retirement, or like the day prior to my retirement, 
she was like, hey, I need you to go to the airport with me because uh, I got to go pick up my brother. And I was like, you know, you can drive yourself to the airport. Like, why the hell do I have to go? You're just picking <laughs> up your brother, right? So I was actually kind of mad about it. So I was like kind of a dick on the way to the airport. I didn't talk much. I was just playing on my phone because I was like, this is fucking stupid. I don't want to be here. We get to the airport, and uh, lo and behold, it wasn't her brother. It was, in fact, my friend Scotty uh, surprising me. And that rush of emotion of seeing this guy I hadn't seen in years and somebody that I care about so much, um, yeah, like my eyes were instantly <laughs> just full of tears. And uh, I related that story to you just recently. And um, so I, I got to ask, man, when when you saw Amos, someone that you hadn't seen in over two days, decades did you cry i got this nipples <laughs> i don't know how i was able to hold the tears back and i know okay so lax is a shit show <laughs> right. and we all know this right we all know this airport is the worst airport in theory like like david said in theory is wonderful Oh, man. We are uh, apparently having... There's all this construction okay. going on. I can't see him. I can't... All right. We're going in and out with Skype connectivity, so I apologize. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Reconnecting. There is a poor network connection. Um, yes. Yes, there is Skype. Um, okay. So hopefully we will get Sean back. Um yeah, Sean is actually no. Oh, there we go. Okay, oh, I think we got our that, connection man. back. Got... <laughs> okay, so we got him back for a moment, and now, uh, so I think he's going to be in and out for a little bit. Um, Sorry, yeah. I finally see him. I pull over to the side. I'm breaking up like hell, aren't I? Yeah, you're actually you're coming in fairly clear now. So go ahead. So you you see him in LAX. I pretty much come to an abrupt stop, just short of squealing tires, because you know cops, right? So I pull over, jump out my car like in two seconds. I mean, I don't even think I took off the seatbelt to be honest, and pop open my trunk so that way I can show, hey, I'm loading someone in. Immediately give him a hug, and it's one of those weird, uncomfortably long hugs where he's going, "Okay, man, you, you can you can kind of stop now." <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm, go I'm going, "Oh my God, it's my fuzzy bear!" <laughs> Inside, I'm just screaming, I'm just screaming like a little girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those moments, right? He's like, yeah, I've been, I've been sitting on planes forever. Get the fuck off. That's right. his attitude towards <laughs> Oh, yeah, because he was flying all the way from, from Alaska. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's, so, that's awesome. The very, the very, very first thing we do is go to in and out that's right outside of LAX. It's like one right down the block, I think. Mm. And stand in line for 20 minutes. Because, yeah. Because L.A.? Yeah. <laughs> I, I felt so bad because I know he's hungry. He's been looking for it. You can smell those burgers. Yeah. And no, we, we got to stand there. <laughs> so after we stand there for minutes and eat three, because that's how we eat, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we hop on the freeway. We sit on the freeway for an hour. Uh -huh. Because L.A. And that's what, yeah. And that's what the entire time was like. Are you up to do the thing we really want to do and spend forever trying to make it happen? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be uh, a common occurrence when you get together for things like that. Um, so what else has been going on? Uh, did you attend the DTNS meetup? Yes, I, uh, well, I got there for the tail end. And the awesome part was Tom Merritt's a St. Louis Blues fan. Ah, uh, yes. Born and raised, he loves the St. Louis Blues. 
I'm a Boston boy. Dad was from Boston. Raised me up on Boston sports. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm there. You know, we're both opposing teams. They're like, hey, we're going to go record an episode of uh, of the Let's Talk About Thrones. You guys want to come? Yeah, and we're, Tom and I were just like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> we're just in the airplane. But so it's for the most part kind of on the quiet side. Listen, everybody talk. You know, talk with everybody for a minute. Every score they get, I kind of cry. I, I kind of just like, cry in my teeth. Tom looks at me. He's like, yeah, I, I, I know your pain. I've, I've been there before. And it's like, yeah, asshole, you're going to win this shit. Fuck. <laughs> finally, at the end of it, he looks over. The St. Louis finally uh, does that last five hit score. I hang my head down. I'm just like, damn, it's over. And he's like, you want a beer? I go. I wish. <laughs> but I met some of the coolest people there. Uh, got to meet Richard Gunther, which was awesome. I wanted to talk to Sarah a bit more. Uh, well, I really didn't get a chance to because mm. everybody was around, and it's like I couldn't hear a goddamn thing. <laughs> uh, when you say Sarah, you're talking about Sarah Lane? Yeah. Amos said that Sarah is shorter in real life than he was expecting. Would that be the case for yeah. you? Very much so. Very, very, very much so. And she was, maybe it's because I arrived late. She was on the quiet side. But I was expecting this big, boisterous voice to come out and like talk over everybody. Oh, right. Yeah. like Kind of like she does on DTNS. <laughs> yeah. Because she's powerful like that. Right. Yeah. You just set up and just go, yes, anything you say because you're awesome. Yeah. Uh, and it was fantastic. Um, real, real quick, Squid. Uh, Wabbit Magic in the chat says, "Sorry, Squid. Not sorry. Go Blues." Uh, <laughs> oh, what a great time for his audio to break up. So I know. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, hopefully, hopefully your signal will come back through. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, I think we are going to wrap the conversation up with Squid once we get him back. Uh, we'll give him an opportunity to plug his stuff and say goodbye, and then um, we will move on with the last bits of our episode. Um. Oh, are you there, Sean? Okay. All right, so... Yeah, four or five. It's for something four or five, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> it pictures me with bad traffic and bad stuff. All right, so I think we are, are going to wrap up this segment of the show. Um, can you tell the audience about the show that you do and how they can experience that? Okay, so like Prince and you know uh, Tim Horton. Okay, um, yeah. So that that's Squid's mixtape, which you can watch uh, every Sunday night at what time? Uh, Sunday night, four p.m. Pacific, uh, seven p.m. Uh, Eastern, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yep, and that's. Uh, Yep, and, and what channel is that on? Uh, Twitch.tv uh, forward slash Big Voice J. All right, so 
so twitch.tv slash big voice J. Uh, I've put a link in the Twitch chat for that. If you are not already following Big Voice J on Twitch, you're you're screwing up. Uh, so sign up, uh, get the notifications so that you know when they go live every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific so that you do not miss an episode. Um, yeah, you guys are great. Um, thank you, Sean, for coming on and giving us the breakdown of, of the um, Amos interaction in the DTNS meetup. Um, we will talk to you again soon, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, we'll talk very soon. All right. All right. That was awesome. Um, I'm glad we got Sean to call in. Um, I had a little bit of intrepidation when he told me that he was going to call me on his commute. I was like, oh, I don't do the uh, cell phones while you're driving thing. He's like, no, 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 no. It's just a hands-free device. All I got to do is hit the button. to Like, if you call me, I just got to hit the button to pick it up, and then I don't even have to touch my phone or even really look at it anymore. I was like, okay, all right. So um, that actually worked out pretty well, um, all things considered, with the uh, with the connection issues that we had. Um, okay, so I want to talk about some things coming up. This Saturday, Diamond Club Movie Party is happening. Uh, it will be, oh my gosh, so... I know Poodle tweeted this out uh, recently. So I, I know they're watching um, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. That is one show that or one movie that they are watching. Um, I don't know. I'm not even sure if I saw what the excuse me what the other movie was going to be. If anybody in the chat knows what it is, go ahead and and put that in there for us. Um, but yeah, that's going to be this Saturday. I believe it's, I believe it's 9 p.m. Pacific. Or no, 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 no. 8 p.m. Pacific, I think. Or maybe, I don't know. If anybody knows what that is, <laughs> go ahead and plug it in there. But it will be, it will be this Saturday evening. Um, and this is a special episode of the Diamond Club movie party because they are the, the crew is in Indiana right now for Turtle Days which is a festival it's a small town festival um yes yeah, so, all right thank you wabbit uh 7 p.m. Pacific 10 p.m. Eastern that sounds correct for the Diamond Club movie party in fact uh head over to movieparty.net for all of the relevant links and everything. And you can follow them on Twitter, uh, call them and leave them a voicemail, things like that. Uh, that's movieparty.net. Check it out. Uh, but yeah, so a bunch of the guys, uh, to include Poodle Puncher, uh, went to this, this small town festival in Indiana. Uh, it's up near, pretty close to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, there's, they're celebrating Turtle Days, which is uh, uh, th there's like a cryptozoological turtle creature that is celebrated <laughs> in that town. Uh, yeah, it's it's a blast. I am sure. I'm looking forward to seeing not just the movie party, but any other uh, periscopes or or uh, Twitch streams or anything that they have going on up there. Um, man, I really wish I <laughs> I was there for Turtle Days. I was planning on going for the longest time, and then, um, again, life happens. Um, sometimes it's hard to coordinate these things, especially when when multiple people are involved and you're trying to get things to work for everyone. Um, things don't always go the way you had originally intended. Um, but, yeah, so check that out, movieparty.net, for all of the info on that. Next week on... The Ritual Misery Podcast. We are going to be welcoming back to the show Mark Jelinek, a.k.a. MJ Snow. Um, he is a meteorologist. He has a wonderful podcast that is on hiatus right now called What Is It About the Weather? I suggest that you look that up in your podcatcher of choice. I, 
I started listening to that show when I first met him, actually, when he came on our show the first time. And I went back and listened to the entire archive of the show. You don't have to be a weather nerd to enjoy it. Uh, Mark actually talks about a lot of different things, a, a wide range of topics on the show, but always relates it back to weather in one way or another. How weather affected certain events or how weather is affecting, um, you know, just sporting events, for example. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. I think you'll really like it. It's called What Is It About the Weather? Look for it on your podcatcher of choice. Uh, but yes, he will be joining us from Santiago, Chile in South America next week. So we are going global next week. So that's going to be a blast. I cannot wait to talk to Mark again. It has been far, far too long. Uh, so be f- be sure to check us out at uh, the, the same uh, same place that you're watching us now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so if you are not watching us live, if you are catching us in your podcatcher, uh, we are live every Thursday night at around 7 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Uh, yeah, if you want to find out what I've got going on or get my occasional commentary on things that I observe, uh, head over to Twitch. I am at rm underscore del noche. Check me out over there. I'm pretty much del noche or del, del noche 77 everywhere on the internet. Um, uh, please hit me up on, on, on Untapped. If you're a beer person and you've got Untapped, look me up. I'm del noche over there. I'd love to uh, to cheers uh, you a beer on there. Uh, Amos is at Ethan Kane on Twitter. The show is at Ritual Misery on Twitter. Um, what I would really like you guys to do, if you have not done this already, I want you to go over to Discord. Log into Discord. Uh, if you are not already on Discord, uh, get it. It's awesome. It's like the greatest chat room that ever existed. Uh, check it out. Uh, you can go to bit.ly slash RMP Discord, and that will, that will get you directly into our our channel, the RMP channel. It's th- that's the most important place to be on the Internet. Uh, get in there. Join the conversation. You can find all these links in more ways to support the show by going over to RitualMisery.com. Uh, like I said, we're live every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific, on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. I want to give a very big thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening. For me, for Amos, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Enjoyed this bro. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y.